Okay, we've been in Spain just over a month now. Um, was it the right decision, to be honest? Without a doubt. Uh, for me, I still got a few years of work in me and having a family so far away in the Philippines makes things very difficult. Um, and it's not non-productive, it's just that I have to take so much time off to go out to the Philippines and I think my career will develop much more faster um, with being able to concentrate on business business things but also that is having the family next to me um, because you know what's life if you haven't got your family so from that aspect yes and what I'm finding in Spain is I love the food, it's fantastic. Fresh fresh food on your doorstep, fresh you know, it's produced locally. You've got um things like olive oils amazing quality. Um pretty much everything is just the way I like it, you know. Weather's great, um rent's cheap properties are cheap uh, it's not so busy at the moment I'm sure I'm going to be a bit irritable when it comes to holiday season and an outside full of tourists <laughs> but uh, I'll put that off for another day but the, the kids are loving it kids love having the beach nearby kids love seeing all the new stuff and and one of the big things here compared to the Philippines is the play parks are everywhere. So, you know, every house and state's got several. It's not like one or two, which is for the kids is the big thing. Um, because it gets them out, gets them, gets them playing for a bit, chilling out. Um, yeah, kids are loving it. April's loving the, the food here. Um, all the ingredients are available because in the Philippines you struggle to get the, all the ingredients all the time and some ingredients you can never get um, so having everything available is, is something new I mean the seafood here I love it it's amazing um, what else is going on oh the paperwork still processing paperwork but try to do like one or two pieces a week because it's so tedious I should really just like have a bad week and just do it all in one go but um, it's all getting there it's just taking a bit of time this week I need to set up self-employment I need to set up the register with the hospital registering with the schools um, and once that's done um, I've got to basically uh, look at setting up a small business um, I met some people here that I can work with on business. Um, they're also keen to work with us, so that could be pretty good and hopefully profitable. I, I'm finding the people here pretty good um, because everyone's in the same boat. It's, you know, it's a positive attitude, uh, which works to everybody's benefit. The other side of that being is. Uh, went and see my cousin and my aunt today who are living a couple of towns away been out my cousin been out here a few years and he, he's got no intention to go back to the UK as he says it's um, here there's no stress he's right I mean I haven't found stressed here if, if anything I, I feel demotivated sometimes because life's so easy you know, so slow going. Um, but that's that's some. You know, if I kick myself up the backside some morning, it's just to say, look, you got stuff to do. But still loving Spain, and I can't see why there'd be anything negative to go on here. Uh, I mean, okay, the paperwork processing is slow and tedious, and I can understand why most Brits get somebody else to do it um, but then again that might be a business coming up very soon 
um, where we'll actually do the paperwork for you, or you can buy our ebooks on how to do most of the processing. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm doing all of this stuff myself. The only stuff I won't be doing myself is the tax accounting, because um, I wouldn't even do that in the UK, because I'm tax is something I don't really understand and if you've got a good ta a good accountant they should always be able to recover more than they're costing you um, so I hope that will be something I'm working on soon but yeah I mean even for something simple you find expats will pay up to 40 euros an hour for somebody to go, and go with them to translate most of the stuff, you don't need anybody to translate if you just put a little bit of effort into learning some of the words, you know, the key phrases and stuff. Okay, um, I had the, the hassle when my wallet was stolen trying to talk to the police. But if I had a bit more um, time, like now, I'm actually learning Spanish. At that time, I wasn't expecting my wallet to be stolen. I was actually on a fact-finding trip. I was only here for a short period of time. Um, but you live and learn. And one of the things I've learned is make sure that you're able to speak the language because the police don't seem, seem to have a, as many people speaking English as I would have expected. But then again, the population is on about 22% um, that speak English. So it's, that's not a lot of people for a country this size. But I mean, their country, I'm not grumbling. It's just that I find it strange that so many expats will pay a lot of money uh, for something. Some of the stuff's really trivial, like registering with the medical system. It's just a process. You fill the forms in, hand them in. You don't even have to speak English. You just got to give it to the right people. So, um, I'll see how it goes. I'm going to write some ebooks on how I do most of this stuff anyway. And it'll be like, you can pay somebody to do it, you can pay us to do it, or buy the ebooks. Because um, doing the Padron and the NIE would have cost, if I'd, got, if I'd paid somebody else to do it, would have cost up to 180 euros. Now, it took me two two days. But that's not two full days, that's basically going to one building at 7 o'clock in the morning and in and out in, well, it was about an hour because I had to go to the bank and uh, stamp a document. And the other one was in and out in 20 minutes. Well, sorry, I was in and out in 20 minutes, but I had to wait from 7 a.m. till uh, 9 in the queue. Okay, most people don't want to do that, but I'm not being funny. If if somebody said to me, "Okay, you can pay me a hundred hundred euros to stand in the queue," I would stand in the queue for a hundred euros because <laughs> that's basically what you're doing. But the thing is, they don't process one at a time; they'll process ten, um, so they're not doing it for that. Even a hundred euros in for a thousand. So yeah, so. Like I said, I don't know why everybody pays other people to do it, because I can see why some people do it pretty well out of here of the other expats. But it's, it's, they're not doing anything wrong. It's just that, obviously, I think a lot of people assume it's got to be more complex than it is. But, yeah, I mean, the town we're in, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying because it's quiet. As you can hear. I mean, we get the old motorbike. One of those little crappy ones with a bored out exhaust, very similar to the Philippines, except the, the guy comes past every day once. Um, where the Philippines, you would get it probably during the day every 20 minutes. Um, so, but it's, it's great. I mean, I'm loving the town at the moment because there's no tourists here, um, so it's quiet. Go down to the plaza, kids can play on the on the uh, play parks, there's the beach, there's the sea, I need to start fishing soon, I've started cycling again, so it's all great, um, April's made some friends here at the Chinese shop, which, uh, which is good because, you know, when I go back to work, it's good to have some friends nearby, 
next to getting the kids into school. Uh, once the kids are in, then I think we'll start to integrate a lot better. The funny thing is where we are is pretty much all Spanish, but when I went over where Gary was today, it's nearly all British. Um, I like the area is in, but the one thing that would bother me is if I was there, I would struggle to integrate with the Spanish because um, there's hardly any of them there. Um, so here, although my language skills are still not good, um, I'm forced to learn Spanish, you know, because I go and process my paperwork and they don't speak English. And we don't be a pidgin Spanish, it was Spanglish, you know, because I, I correct some of the words they say, they correct some of my words. Works well for everybody because we all come out with knowing a little bit more of each other's language. And for me, um, dealing with officials is also very positive because they remember you because you taught them a new word or something. And, you know, because at first they're a bit um, frustrated because they they know they're... English isn't very good, but as they're trying to talk and they've got words missing, you're filling them in. They're remembering the words that um, that you've taught them, so they they start to improve their English, and also they remember that you took the effort. Um, but it, I mean, one of the things I would, as a tip, is don't be the typical tourist. Uh, always be polite. I'm always I'm one for shaking hands and saying thank you and stuff like that, because I said, you know, when you see the TV shows when people are annoying officials, um, you know, you see like things like, say, airport. I'll just say airport as an example because that's probably one that's got shown near Spain where people turn up to the flight late and then are complaining because they're not allowed on the plane. That sort of attitude I've seen in the Philippines with um, people with problems with something, you know, TV broke or whatever. Um, and those things are a major issue because that's where what people have a perception of. That's what people think um, expats are like. So if you're not like that and you're polite and everything else, it goes a long way. Um, I just thought something looking at behind me. There's a 32 inch TV behind me and the reason I bought that was a bit of showing the amount of money I would have paid somebody else to do the documents I've done so far um, instead of doing it myself, paid for the TV because quite simply instead of giving it away we spent the money but also I've learned how to do the documents once I do these ebooks. Um, they'll like they'll pay for, pay for another TV even. Um, but yeah, love it, Spain. I apologise for the video being a bit long. It, it's half past two in the morning because the kids are asleep because I'm trying to do these videos and quite simply I'm tired. I mean, that's why a lot of these videos I look tired. It's because it's normally in the middle of the night or I've had a long day. Um, but I'm hoping to start catching a bit of sun. I'm looking a bit younger for a change. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching.